Thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. Father, in your presence there is the fullness of joy. And on your right hand, pleasures forevermore. Father, we are here this morning to listen to your word. And to be blessed by your word. The entrance of thy word gives light. And it gives understanding to the simple. Father, this morning, prepare our hearts and our minds to receive your word. May the word that we are receiving this morning transform our lives. And bring us a lot of blessings from you. And cause us to draw closer to yourself than ever before. Father, we thank you. And we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wherever you are, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Today, I am teaching on a very important subject. And I'm teaching on 10 good reasons to honor your father. 10 good reasons to honor your father. Of late, I've loved the word 10. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> 10 good reasons to honor your father. But before I go into that one, I want you to understand something. That in this life, when you don't look at yourself, and you are always looking at other people, <laughs> you may be the loser. What am I trying to say? Always see everything around you that is working together for your good. For instance, every law God gives in his word does not make God God. It only makes your life better. Every instruction a mother or a father gives to a son or a daughter will only make the son or the daughter's life better. As for your mother, as for your father, he has already grown. The same way, my righteousness, man, my obedience to God does not make God God. It only makes me better. Because God was the good for me. And the last time I checked, he said, he who is loved by the parents is that person that the parents have been disciplining. So when they discipline you, they want your life to become better. The same way when God says, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not fornicate, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not do this. Those things will not make God good. It is what is going to make your life better. Jesus said in John 10 verse 10, he said, I have come that thou mayest have life and you shall have life more abundantly. So this teaching that I'm going to teach, I'm teaching on we honoring our fathers. Somebody say, but what about the fathers too? The truth is that it's not all everyone who is is a father, but everyone is a child. So I'm going to speak this morning to children. I'm not going to speak about the fathers. But the Bible says fathers should also not provoke their children. Yes, I know about that scripture. But it is not everyone who is a father. When I preach along that line, maybe when we do men's conference, then I can preach on that one. But until then, since we, are, we all have fathers in life, then I should be speaking to all children, which includes myself. Hallelujah. And every rule that God gives, every direction that God gives, is to your own, for your own good. I want you to know that in this life, there are three major laws. We have the human law that is being enforced by a man. When you are not seen, you are fine. When you are seen, maybe the human law will just deal with you, give you punishment or give you reward. But there are two other critical laws. And number one, we have the natural law, which has its own punishment and its own reward embedded in it. It has been structured. The same way we have a supernatural law. So the example of natural law is sowing and reaping. When you sow, obviously, when it rains, it will germinate. You can be a Juju man, you can be a Muslim, you can be whatsoever. When you sow on the ground, it will germinate. Hallelujah. The same applies to gravity. It doesn't matter who you are. When you jump from a rooftop and you land on the ground, you feel something. (laughs) And you don't go up, you go down. It's a simple law, it's a natural law. When you try to walk on the sea, like Jesus did, who was able to overcome natural laws, you may sink. So there are natural laws. And like I said, all the natural laws, they don't need any human being. They don't need any human being to enforce it. The punishment and the rewards are already in them. When you drink poison, natural law, the poison may kill you. Hallelujah. Then we have the supernatural laws. 
the laws that have been given by God Himself. And in the natural, in the, in the supernatural laws are embedded the punishment and the rewards. So when you deal, when you play with a natural law or the supernatural law, then you have yourself to be blamed. And that's why in operating a natural law or a supernatural law, you don't have to look at someone. You must look at yourself. And because this person also jumped from the rooftop, me too, I will jump. When you jump, you may suffer what he has suffered, maybe even worse. Because it's not any human being who is enforcing it. It is nature that is enforcing it. Hallelujah. So, as I'm speaking on honoring our Father, it's one of the supernatural laws. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Today is Father's Day. And let me start from this angle. Before I give you reasons why you need to honor. Many people all over the world have a lot of resentment, anger, bitterness against their fathers. And most of these bitterness and whatever have been created by mothers. But I want every mother listening to me all over the world. The scriptures cannot be broken. So when you teach your children to dishonor their fathers, it will come a long way to hunt you. Because there are two major things that is linked to honoring our fathers and our mothers. So when you say they shouldn't honor their father, or by what you say to them, by virtue of what you say, they dishonor their fathers, you are to be blamed. Because two things will happen to them. And I will show you even as we go on. Hallelujah. Why don't people honor their fathers? Or why don't they honor their parents? Number one, it is as a result of anger, unforgiveness, and bitterness. And the, and, and the, the, the brothers, you know, they, they are all in the same lane. Wrath, anger, rage, bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. They are all in the same cap. When you have that one in, in, in your heart, it will be difficult for you to honor your father. And remember, Bible says that anyone with bitterness becomes wicked. And when you are bitter, you will not be happy. I believe you are now picking up your own thing why you need to appreciate your father. I have not even started yet. So if there is bitterness in your heart against your father, you will never be happy. And when you are not happy, your bones will be aching you. And when your bones start aching you, you will be sick. And when you get too sick, you may die. So for not appreciating your father alone, there it has a dire consequences of you ending up or um, finishing up in this world. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, now beginning. From verse 1 to 3, it said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Hannah, thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Hallelujah. So, you know, every time we celebrate our birthday, there is, no matter how someone greets you, you know there's a particular wish they, you need them to give you. As a pastor, I say, what do you want me to pray for? Pastor, I need only two things. Long life and prosperity. That's excellent. Happy birthday, long life and prosperity. But I wish that immediately I say long life and prosperity, that it should happen. But we have seen it in the scripture here that it, the long life and prosperity is linked to something that many of us are refusing to do. That's why if you have bitterness against your father today, remove that bitterness from your heart. Because that bitterness may kill you. It may cause you to end your life short. It may cause that father you have bitterness against to be at a funeral. Number two reason why many people don't honor their fathers is pride. Pride. You compare yourself with other people. And my friend's father drives Mercedes Benz. And my friend's father has taken him abroad. And my friend's father has bought them a house. And my friend's father has done that. Are you wiser than God? Who gave you that father? The truth is that you didn't choose your dad. I want to say that again. You didn't choose your dad. So when you despise your dad out of pride, you are saying, God, you are very stupid. And when you deal with God that way, God will deal with you. Hallelujah. And the reason why pride, when pride comes, remember, 
Bible says that God will give grace to the humble, but he will resist the proud. Hallelujah. So when you are proud, God will bring you what I call this grace. Because if he can give grace to the humble, then obviously he will give this grace to the proud. Does it make sense? He gives grace to the humble. So if you are proud, then God will give you a disgrace. That's why when you are proud, eventually you will end up being disgraced. I pray that today you shall not be disgraced in the name of Jesus. I pray that from today you shall not be walking in pride. God in his own wisdom gave you that man as a father. I'm talking about our earthly fathers or the fatherly figures in our lives. Your father may be a drunkard, but God gave him to you. Your father may be a wife beater. God gave him to you. Your father may be whatsoever. God gave him to you. You are not wiser than God. Don't be proud. Be very, I mean, be very confident about your father. And I will explain the reason. Let me even say it before I even go into my notes. There are many fatherless children around. So if you are lucky that someone has placed a surname on you, at least for minimum, you should be able to be grateful. And that's the third reason why people are not honoring their parents. They are not grateful. So number one, I said it is pride, it is bitterness, anger, wrath, whatsoever. One. Number two, as a result of pride, out of comparison and despising our parents. Some even call their mothers their house girls. Because you think you are, you are a high class person. You are hiding your parents. That's why it shall not be well with you. I'm not the one saying it. The Bible says so. You must be proud of the woman who gave birth to you. The same woman, the same man you are despising is the same man who went to sweat, went to dig, brought the money, and they used to buy SME. They used to buy cocoa for you, and you have grown. Today, you are a celebrity. Today, you are a great man. You are a rich man, and you are despising them. God will not look kindly on you if you do that. And the third reason is ungratefulness. People are so ungrateful. We forget where we are coming from. You forget the day your mother has to go and sell that cloth to pay your school fees. You forget the day that your father says, go to the school, I'm, I'll follow you soon. And he went to borrow and disgrace himself to bring money to come and pay for your, your school fees. Or to even give you a, a, a feeding money. You forgot it so soon. You are so ungrateful, so you think you cannot appreciate your father. Like I said, there are many fatherless children out there. They don't even have a father figure in their lives. But today... You can say, this is my father. You can say, this is my biological father. Many are those who don't even know where their parents are. And you know, human beings are not learning. But where I stand as a pastor, I know how people struggle when they are going to marry. Chasing after the same fathers they have no respect for. Me, I won't marry my father. I won't do this. I won't do that when they are about to marry. Whether their father is in the village, whether their father is in prison, they go looking for them. It tells you that having that fatherly figure in your life is very, very crucial. When people are going to marry or something, they say, ah, my father is dead. If my father were to be alive, at least my uncle would not be throwing me about that like this. Which tells you that there is, it's so very, very important. Hallelujah. So I pray that may the Lord take away pride from you. May the Lord take away bitterness from you. And may the Lord take ingratitude from you. Hallelujah. Amen. So now let me tell you, how do we honor? So that I'll go to the reasons why you need to honor. How do we honor? How? By giving to them. <laughs> By giving to you. Those who are the fatherly figures in your life. By giving to them. By giving to them. I want us to read Malachi, Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. So that you know, even God himself requested for Hannah. Hallelujah. God div God called for Hannah. And one of the things as I was preparing that the Lord taught me is that any father or any mother who does not teach his children to honor them, any parent who does not teach their children to honor them, is setting them up to fail. Let me say that again. Any father or any mother who does not teach his children to honor him or her, is setting them up to fail. Because it is in the handling they give to their parents, their fathers and their mothers, 
that they open the door for their blessings. If you are listening to me right now, I say today I'm speaking to children, not parents. Even if your parents are not opening the door for you to honor them, honor them. By closing the door for you to honor them, indirectly they are saying fail. So when you get to a point where your parents say, I won't talk about you again, and they leave your case for you, they are saying die young and fail, indirectly. It's an indirect thing. The Bible says so. I saw it in the Bible yesterday. And I will prove it. Hallelujah. So anyway, and they have find reasons to Hannah. God himself demanded for Hannah. God commanded Hannah. And I want to read Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. A son honoreth his father. So God knows that it is a done deal. God didn't say a son must now go and honor the father. He has given the law far back in Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 12. He said, Hannah, your mother, your father. God has made the law. So, in his books, it is a decree, an executive decree. Which means that he knows you are already doing it. So, if you are not doing it, you are on your own. So, God made reference to the law he gave. And he said, a son honoreth his father. It means that I know a son honoreth his father. Say, hey, oh, me, my son doesn't honor me. God say, hey, I'm surprised. Because what we know is that a son honoreth his father. Like me saying, Everybody from Teshi speaks Gan. So he said, Oh, me, I'm from Teshi, but I can't speak Gan. That is a surprise. But we all know that this is a generic thing that when you are from Teshi, you speak Gan. And God is saying that a son honoreth his father. Every son must honor his father. And now he said, And a servant is master. Then he asked a question. Every day we say the Lord's Prayer. He said, If then I be a father, where is my Hannah? God said that if you can call me a father, where is my Hannah? God expects us to honor him as a father. That's why when you say the Lord's Prayer, listen to what Jesus Christ said. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name means Hannah. Hallelujah. In this scripture, how was God expecting us to honor him? He said, if I be your father, where is my Hannah? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts. O priest that despised my name. And ye say, where have we despised thy name? So one of the ways to honor your parents is not to despise them. It's not to despise them. Some of you, your parents may be crippled. Don't despise them. Some of your parents may be drunkard. Don't despise them. Some of you, your fathers may be whatever. Don't despise them. Hallelujah. Verse 7, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. You give me, you, listen, Father's Day, someone who wants to even try, cry, may even go and buy socks and go and give it to the father. Mother's Day, then you buy cloth and go and give it to your mother. Your children are also watching if you're a man. You say, oh, daddy, I now know what I will give you on Father's Day. They know. They saw what you give to your daddy, they will repeat or they will even do less. Hallelujah. God says you offer polluted things. So when you offer polluted things, some of you, you give out there what you have never given to your fathers, what you have never given to your, your parents. You give them the leftover. You give them what you don't need. And the last time I said it, somebody was shocked that some people even use their mothers as their house girls. Oh, if you want somebody to come and take care of our children, uh, sweetheart, let me go and bring my mother so that we can be paying my mother. Really? If your mother is coming to help you, that's no problem. But you're treating your mother like a, your house girl. And you, you cause her to go about, do all the house chores for you, really. If you don't take care, your mother will be at your, at your funeral service. The same woman who's sitting and is helping you will be there to bury you. Because God says so. I didn't say it. Hannah. He said, don't offer polluted bread upon my altar. As you have said. Hallelujah. So quickly, before time goes... What are the reasons to honor our fathers? From what I read in Ephesians 1 to 3, he said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Father, mother. It includes your spiritual fathers because the church is also a family. Your spiritual fathers and mothers. He said, for, So the first one, you must remember that obeying or honoring your father is not a choice. It is not a suggestion. 
It is not when I feel like doing it, I will do it. If I don't feel like doing it, I won't do it. No. It is a command. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. It doesn't matter who they are. It is a command. So not doing it is showing blatant rebellion and disrespect to God. God says, children, obey. It doesn't, it, it, there's, no, there's no negotiation. Obey your parents in the Lord. So the first thing you must know is that it is a command. It is a non-negotiable thing. And when you check through scriptures, you realize that God gave stiff punishment to children who disobeyed their parents. And one of the scriptures I saw, which I got scared, he said that he will cause bears to come and eat away their eyes. <laughs> if you disobey your parents, if you dishonor them, <laughs> he said bears will come and pluck out your eyes from you. You will not see your way well. You will be blind. God says so. If honoring our parent is just an easy thing, why? Or it is nothing to worry about. Why would God put a very stiff punishment to it? And remember, he has also put another punishment to it that it shall not be well with you and this will not belong if you don't do so. So number one, it is what? It is a command. It is a command. Number two. Number two, and remember, if you say you are a child of God and you love God, then obey his commandment. He said in John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, Obey my commandment. Number two point I want you to take note is that it is good. It is what? Bible says, Hannah, your mother and your father, for this is what? Right. It is what? Right. And like I've always said, if it is right, do it. If it is wrong, don't do it. Which means that if you don't Hannah your father, you are doing a wrong thing. I'm not if you agree with me. If you are there, you can type, I agree with you. <laughs> you can type, I agree. If you don't honor them, you are doing a wrong thing. And God is not happy with you doing the wrong thing. And like I've already told you, when you do the right thing, you are doing it for your own self. And you are doing that to honor God. Hallelujah. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. If it is right, do it. God is saying that this if there's any right thing you must do, this is the right thing you must do. Then verse 2, he said, Hannah thy father and mother. I've showed you that you can honor them by giving to them, by not despising them, by not, by telling them, you can honor them by telling them, mommy, I love you so much, daddy, I love you so much, daddy, thank you for paying my school fees, daddy, thank you for taking care of me, Daddy, I'm so grateful you are the best daddy in the world. That is what you also got. Daddy, I just want you to know that if you have not put a name on me, by this time I will be a picking abolo. Hallelujah. Tell them. By telling them, you are also encouraging them without knowing. When you tell them, you encourage them, they will even do more. When it's left with their last. Unfortunately, our society have not really proven or shown how hard men are working. Because many a time the man will not even be there to go to the market to go and buy the food. But he gives the money to the woman. The woman goes out there to go and buy. So the woman is the one cooking. Then when the man wants to buy socks for you, he gives the money to the wife. The wife will go and buy the socks. So everyone sees that mommy is the one doing all this for me. Forgetting that the money is what is being used to exchange for those things. And most of the times, it may be coming from the father. But mothers will never say it. The only time they will say something about the father is, your father is a useless man. He has refused to bring this money. But you too, when you sit there and you look around, you know the, how long your father has paid your school fees. Because of you, he's owing so much. Because of you, he wakes up in the morning 5 a.m., he comes back 10 p.m. So you see, daddy is not at home with you. He's not there to do your own work. But he only tell you daddy is going to bring money to pay your school fees. So the society in which we are have demonized fathers so much that correcting it has even become a problem. Father's Day alone was confusion. Three weeks. Last two weeks, Father's Day. Last week, Father's Day. Today, I'm even surprised. I don't know whether they will do it say next week is a Father's Day. Confusion everywhere. Confusion because that's the way we have demonized fatherhood. But without fathers, you have no feathers to fly. Hallelujah. So I said, tell them. Respect them in a visible manner. Let your father know that you really respect him in a visible manner. You are honoring him. Give them gifts. Spend time with them. Give them attention. Oh, in Pagbamon, I chobe mini. 
Some even go ahead and beat their, their fathers. Today, if you have ever done that, or go and beg. Some have even insulted their, pay, their fathers. You think today you are a rich man. You think you're today your father has been useless. Some, people, some of us say that our fathers were useless. And they gave birth to you. And they took, 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 took care of you. How about them? So I said, number one, it's a command. Number two, it is right. Hannah, thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. God gave ten commandments. And out of all the ten commandments, one came with a promise. With that, God is so akin with that particular prom with that particular commandment. You know why? God cannot bring anything to you except he passes through your father. He told the children of Israel, he told Abraham, I know you'll be a good father. That everything I teach you, you will teach your children. That's why fathers are there to show the way. If you are there, you don't like what your father has done to you, and you are a father, you are also a man. Please be a good father then. Don't be transferring the same thing that you are not happy about. He said, this is the first commandment with a promise. And like I've always said, every promise comes with a premise. And the premise is what we have read in verse 1 and verse 2. Obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your mother and your father. And the Bible says that, what is the promise? It said, and it shall be well with you. So number three, why you must honor your mother and your father is that it shall be well with you. You shall prosper. Children who honor their fathers, go get divine blessings. Get divine blessings because the blessing will come from your fathers. God will pass it through them. When they tell you you are blessed, they are wishing well you well. They are wishing you well. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. Which means that if you don't handle your parents, it shall not be well with you, unfortunately. That's why many people are married today. They are praying that, God, I need children. I need children. You cannot get the children. Check yourself well. Many of you don't need anointing oil. All you have to do is I go and do restitution. Go to your father and say, Father, I have despised you so much. Father, forgive me. Father, sorry I insulted you. Father, sorry my mother uh, pitched me against you. Therefore, even my wedding cry, I didn't, I didn't invite you. Go and beg them. No matter who they are, God brought them into your life for a reason. When you do that, well, you can see that in less than no time, you get pregnant. In less than no time, that confusion that you are, that confusion will be stopped in your marriage. That business will boom up again. The fact that today you are doing what doesn't mean that uh, for despising your parents, the result is not waiting for you. It will wait for you. If you don't see it today, you will see it tomorrow. You see that it shall be well with you. And the third, the fourth one, why must we handle our parents? What is the reason? You will live long. Longevity is in honoring our parents. One of the lessons I have learned from the big, big men, like Bishop Oedipo and the rest, is that every grace you see in someone that you like, tap into it. No matter who you are, even if your, mother, your father gave birth to you at the age of 14, your father is still older than you by 14 years. So if you want to cross where your father has crossed, go and honor him. And that's why if you don't honor him, you will live lower than him. He said that, and your days will be long. The days on this earth, the days that God has given to you shall be long. The easiest way to cut your destiny short, that's why they will tell you, today many people are dying so young. You know the reason? Because of this honor. Because of this honor. And we have seen it. People have dishonored. People have dishonored and we have seen the results. And yet some of us are still dishonoring. You didn't choose your dad. You didn't choose your dad. What is the, the fifth reason why? You must honor your father. It doesn't matter what your father has done. Remember, your father is also created in the image of God. Is what? Your father is created in the image and the likeness of God. And you know, when you dishonor anything, that is created in the image and the likeness of God. You have dishonored God. Do you know the Bible even says that we should even pray for our enemies? 
You know, the Bible says that we should even forgive those who have offended us. How much more is the one who has given birth to you? Hannah them. Genesis 1.27 And God created mankind in his own image. And in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Despite your father's parental history, he is created in the image of God. Like you are priceless to God, so is your father. If you value yourself and you honor yourself, honor your father. He's also in the image of God like you. Hallelujah. When it is difficult to honor your father, always remember that this man I am seeing over there is created in the image and the likeness of God. Number six. The reason why you must honor your father is because it is through them that you had life. It is through them that you had life. Hallelujah. God brought the life. God brought life into you through your father. Without your father's loins, you will never be a living human being. The fact that you are, you are alive, you must always honor your father. Hallelujah. The next one, reason why you must honor your father, is because God has created him and given the role of a father over you. So God says, no, I don't need to think I need to leave you alone. I will give you a father. Like I've always said, already said, God has given you a father. And if you reject what God has given to you, you are on your own. God's will for your earthly father was to love you the way he loves you. As dearly loved children. So when you say, our father who art in heaven. God says, I have an earthly father to represent me here. That's why we have the spiritual fathers representing God on the earth. That's why we have the earthly fathers representing God on the earth. So he say, give me this day my daily bread. Then your, your earthly father will come and say, take money and go and buy bread. Your spiritual father will be teaching you, lead me not into temptation. He will teach you not to fall into temptation. He say, and deliver me from evil. Your spiritual father is delivering you from evil. The prayer you pray to the heavenly father, he has provided an earthly father to take care of it. So when you reject those earthly fathers, your heavenly father cannot appear to you and do it. So despising and rejecting them is like rejecting God himself. God is the father to the fatherless and a defender of widows. He is God in his holy dwelling. Psalm 68 verse 5. I want you to know that God will find his own. That's why I'm saying that some of you will have fatherly figures. Your biological father may be dead. Or you may not even have one. You don't even know where your father is. You are picking a bolo, unfortunately. But I pray that God will be your father. Which means God will present a fatherly figure in your life. Hannah them. Some of you may be a total stranger pick you up and is taking care of you. And that's the father you see. Hannah them. If you despise them, that's why I pity people who dishonor their pastors. I pity you. I pity you. I, I, I expect that you shall be wise to Hannah. If you are not even wise to honor, I'm on my way. Go in. You, you suffer for it. Nobody suffers for it. Because God did not bring you the person. He said, when you are in need, this man will pray for you. When you are in need, this man will counsel you. When you are in need, this man will deliver you. When you are in need, this man will direct you. And you despise them. And you expect God to come from heaven to come and do it for you. It doesn't happen that way. Hallelujah. Why my game must you, Hannah? Honoring your father because honoring your father affects your relationship with God as your father. You are able to get closer to God. You are able to see God as a father practically when you honor your earthly father. I want to say that again. You are able to honor, you are able to get into a closer relationship with God as a father when you are able to honor your earthly father. You know why? Because honoring your father is obedience to God. And when you are obedient to God, you are very close to God. Hallelujah. Dishonoring your father means you are disrespecting God. And when you disrespect God, God will move away from you. Amen. Number, is it number nine? Number eight. Uh, number eight. Honoring God. In honoring your father shows that you acknowledge 
the place of authority that God has placed in the hand of your father. What I'm trying to say is that your father has been given a place of authority over you. And I want to read that one very carefully. <laughs> Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Romans 13 verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the highest power. For there is no power, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. So your father has been ordained of God to have authority over you. That's why the easiest way to spoil a family is to take up the fatherly figure. Any family that the mother will be insulting the man. Why are you disciplining the children? Why are you beating them? Why are you directing them? And the father says, okay, from today, I won't talk about you and your children again. That family is doomed. Because God even told Eve that, you know what? Your husband, Adam, will rule over you. Not only you, will even rule over you and your world and your children. And ruling God himself has set that rule and authority. The day you despise it, you are on your own. The next one. Number nine. Honoring your father pleases God. Honoring your father pleases God. And I want to read Leviticus 19 verse 3. I'm bringing it to a close. Leviticus 19 verse 3. Honoring your father pleases God. Leviticus 19 verse 3. Very, very crucial. Please don't ever downplay honoring your father or your parents. Don't let your, any of your parents speak to you against your own mother or your own father. You are digging your own grave. The Bible says that vultures will come and eat out your eyes. If you do that. Leviticus 19 verse 3. And I read. You shall fear every man. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father. And keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Amen. And finally, finally, honoring your father. Honor your father because God hears and gives attention to his prayers for you. So whenever you honor your parents, one thing you must know is that God has ordained them to bless you. When your parents bless you, can I tell you something? I'm a pastor. But when your parents should say bless you, it is more powerful than when the pastor blesses you. Because your number one pastor or your number one uh, priest is your mother and your father. Hallelujah. If you lose God, many of you, you respect your father, your pastors, and disrespect your parents. God, that cannot substitute for it. Your pastor is your spiritual father. That's why it's very powerful. Respect them and honor them. But that should not re replace you dishonoring or honoring your parents. In the Bible, remember, Esau went to the father and said, Father, just give me one last blessing. Jacob became Jacob because he received the blessings of the father. Joseph, when, before the father died, he went there with his own children and said, I need your blessing. They know what the blessing is. Therefore, this morning, as a father in the Lord, I will be releasing the fatherly blessing unto you. And according to the word of the Lord, he said, whenever you bless, God will bless. Even when if a husband, you know, a husband in the home is a father to all. The wife, brother, you know, the, 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 the wife is a daughter of the man. Remember when, when Sarah was not getting pregnant, God revealed himself to, to um, Isaac. And he said, pray for your wife. And when Isaac prayed for, for Rebecca, boom. She got pregnant and she gave birth to twins. Genesis 25 and verse 21. Don't despise the blessings of your father. Don't despise it at all because when your father blesses you, it will take you a long way. Many of the men of God I have seen, many of the great men, they have their, their parents praying for them. Whenever you call mama, whenever you call your daddy, say, daddy, always pray for me. I remember when I wrote my first book, after launching it, I pastored it 
And I put money into it and went to give it to my grandfather because he brought me up. He has played a fatherly role in my life than any other person. He said, ah, I was thinking of coming to give you money to promote that book publisher. I said, no, I must do what is right. The first thing is that I must honor you. And that's why I, I know he won't be able to read English. But I, I, went, I sent it to him. And he blessed me. And that blessing, I know, is still, is still following me. Don't despise the blessings of your parents. In conclusion, I have said so many things. But let me just conclude by letting you know a few things. So I'm going to just going to juggle them. Mention all the benefits that you stand to derive by honoring your parents. I said number one, it's a command. So when you obey it, you have obeyed God. <coughs> when you obey it, you have obeyed God. It also honors God. Whenever you honor your parents, you have respected God. Also, it encourages your father to even do more. It's because people have been despising their father that they don't even want to do it. But after all, when you have done all these things, they will say you have done nothing. So let me go and drink and use my own money for my pocket. But when you appreciate them, Father, thank you. Thank you for paying my school fees. I know it is not easy. And that or that, he will be doing more. It also improves your relationship with your, fam- with, with, with your father. It builds up the family line. When you keep on appreciating that, no, we don't look down on you at all. We know how hard you are trying. Eh? A father in the house, pay light bill, pay everything. Yet, what the father is doing is not being seen. All fathers in the world, I wish you a happy, happy Father's Day. You have done your part. Amen. Even, you know, let me tell you something. This one is just by the side. The job on the bed alone is not easy. On the, it's not easy at all. It's something you are thinking. That's why men are working all over the world, looking for medicine to make them powerful on the bed. Even with that one, that is not the job to be appreciated. May God bless every father in the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. It heals you when, you are, when you appreciate your father. It heals you. It heals your bitterness. It heals your pride. It is your ingratitude. Ungrateful people are not happy people. Many of you, Father's Day, instead of you to be happy, you are so sad. Uh, uh, that my father, eh? I will do him. What will you do him? If you are not lucky and he will die and leave you, he leaves you with your own wahala on the earth. Why won't you heal? Why would you forgive him and appreciate him and live your own life? He strengthens your family. He doesn't bring that division. He doesn't bring that division. Today, the mother is saying to the niece, the father is saying, no, 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 no. I appreciate the father to strengthen your, 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 your relationship. It brings blessings to you. God's, the fatherly blessings will always come to you in the name of Jesus. Therefore, wherever you are under the sound of my voice, I stand in the place of a father over your life. God has raised me as a father over you. Like Elisha said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel. My father, my father, Jesus called God my father. In the name of Jesus, I shall stand here, I release the fatherly blessings over your life. And I decree that wherever people stumble and fall, when you should get there, you shall walk through cheaply in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare over your life that you shall always receive the dews of the heavens. And your ground shall forever be wet. In the name of Jesus, whatever you sow shall germinate. Whatever germinates shall blossom. Whatever blossom shall bear fruit. In the name of Jesus, you shall never labor in vain. The fruit of your hand, the labor of your hand shall bear fruit. You shall enjoy the fruit of your labor. In the name of Jesus, I declare and I declare unto your life that you shall live long. You shall live long. You shall live long. I cancel every premature death in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and I declare you shall prosper on every side. May the Lord settle you in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that has been a stumbling block before you, I stand there as a father and I command it to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. When you go out there, you shall go out like a lion. Every prey you want to catch, you shall catch. And no thing, nothing shall come against you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare and I declare the blessing of the Lord over your life. That no weapon from the against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you in judgment, we shall condemn. In the name of Jesus, I release the heavenly Father blessings over your life. And I declare and I declare that before this arise, God will supply. In the name of Jesus, you shall never lack in any good thing. You shall never lack in any good thing. You shall be wiser than the ancient. You shall have more understanding than your teachers. Wherever the fathers have stopped, that's where you shall begin. In the mighty name of Jesus, you shall be a giant on the earth. You shall do whatever God has ordained your life to be. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare upon your life, whenever the soul of your fish shall touch, it shall be granted unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare in your life that success, prosperity, honor, glory, blessings, health, wisdom shall be your portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, your name shall be made great. You shall see your children's children. Your children shall never be a burden to you, but it shall be a blessing to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that anyone who blesses you shall be blessed. And anyone who curses you shall be cursed. Because of you, all nations of the earth shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, you shall be in your own corner, but God will release you to the world. Your fame shall be noised abroad. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree that your hands are blessed. Your hands are blessed. Your forehead is blessed. Favor is locating you. Favor is locating you. Favor is locating you. In the name of Jesus, I decree on today, today being the Father's Day, as I release the Father's blessing upon your life, that vision helpers shall locate you. They shall come from the north, they shall come from the south, they shall come from the east, they shall come from the west, in the name of Jesus. Anything that has never been a concern to you, today is the final day. It shall never be so again, in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall have more than enough. You shall not be an irresponsible parent. You shall stand tall. And take care of your children the way God wants you to be. Above all, I decree and I declare into your life that you shall never stray away from the fear of the Lord. You shall never stray away from serving the Lord. You shall serve the Lord. You shall live with the Lord. You shall be with him all the days of your life, now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed and you are highly favored. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Wherever you are, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, watching me on Facebook Live, listening to me on radio, um, it's an opportunity for you. You can give if you so want to give. Tighten or want to sow a seed whatsoever. You can do it on this line 0277 845205. And you can visit us at Divine Wisdom Ministries International. We are located at Teshikam 2, very close to uh, the taxi rank. Join us and your life will never be the same. God bless you and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye. Hallelujah. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen.